This is the Shine On You Crazy Daisy podcast, and I'm your host, Trudy Simmons from the Daisy Chain Group, providing platforms and opportunities for business women to be seen and heard. This platform is for the women entrepreneurs that want to hear the real stories of what it takes to be yourself and run a business with all the different hats that you might have to wear. Come and join the Shine On You Crazy Daisy membership, offering online networking, co-working, collaboration, and monthly masterclasses for you to grow your knowledge. Go to the daisychaingroup.com for more information. These are the platforms to hear and share the stories of the tenacious, the rebellious, and the resilient women that are working towards the future that they build for themselves and their families. Hello, and welcome to the Shine On You Crazy Daisy podcast. And today I am thrilled and excited to bring to you Joanne Bonnet from Joanne Bonnet. Joanne, (laughs) thank you so much for being involved in the Shiny Crazy Daisy book and podcast. Please tell us about your business. So thank you for thank you for having me. It's exciting to be here. Um, Shining on is definitely a theme that I found throughout my life. And I've got a couple of businesses, but my main which is why you said Joanne Bonnet, but my main business for the last 12, 13 years has been with Arbon, which is a global health and wellness business. We're all about mind, body, skin, helping you to flourish from the inside and out. But I also do some consultancy work, I do some speaking, and I'm starting a new venture with something called the Enneagram. And I think we'll get to that a bit later. We shall. Joanne, I absolutely loved your chapter and the way that you write. I could have read it forever, honestly. What you mentioned at the beginning is that feeling that we go through when you've been into corporate and how you come out of corporate um, and realise that you want to do something for yourself. But the way that you worded it and wrote about it, it was such a visceral feeling that I felt Because at some stage you were on a train and you broke down literally and you said, I wondered where the humans were. And oh, it broke my heart when I read that. I really felt it. But how did it feel to you in that moment? Well, that moment was kind of a culmination of lots of bad stuff and difficult stuff that had been going on. And and I know that, you know, Jack Canfield's success principles, first rule is take 100% responsibility for your life. So I think when I look around at where the humans were, there's definitely in hindsight, looking back and going, was I even asking them to notice me? Was I showing up for myself in the way and uh, that I needed to um, to make a difference? But that moment was, yeah, the train was late. I was going to be late to pick up my kids again. I felt like I was failing in every area. I didn't think I was a good enough mom. I didn't think I was a good enough businesswoman. I didn't think I was a good enough wife, friend, sister, you know, on, on, on. And then there I was sitting down having this really intensely personal moment where I just it all flooded into me my mum had died you know the year before and I was we just sold our house and I was just having this moment of going I'm breaking my heart here on a train in public surrounded by people and I just looked around and not one single person would make eye contact with me and it was just like at what point are we living life where we are so closed off from everyone around us that even on a human level whatever your thing and I think this today is playing out you know whatever your beliefs are whatever you you know are you uh, whichever way of the fence on anything you fall let's all recognize we're all humans here and and have a bit of compassion and share a little bit of empathy with one another and 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 that had to start with myself i had to be the one that made the decision enough is enough things are not going to change unless I make that change, unless I am this change. And I didn't know what it was going to look like. You know, I know a lot of people watching this might be in a point where they're moving into a new phase going, I've always had this dream. I've always wanted to do this. I've got these plans and really so impressed and a huge respect for anyone in that situation. I wasn't that person. Mm. I wasn't being drawn to what I was going towards. I was just being kicked out of what I had to get away from. Um, and and I just made that leap, trusting my instincts finally that I don't know quite what's coming next, but I believe I'm made for more. I believe my family deserves more of me. Um, and, you know, they were getting what was the rest of me, not the best of me, and I needed to make that change. Um, and, of course, when we make that decision and the power of intention is behind it, then then things start to happen. And um, I was very, 
very excited about what happened next. It didn't happen straight away, but yeah, there were some big changes and it was definitely the right decision to jump off that train. (laughs) It is fascinating to listen to you talk because it, I can see from reading your chapter and from talking to you now, the lessons that you learn on the flip side of being in corporate from that feeling of, uh, finding that you wanted to be compassionate about yourself and other people you wanted to spread kindness in the way that you do things you wanted to make sure that people were able to be connected in the world because in that moment you couldn't see any of those things and then you talked in the chapter about um that you had a strong work ethic and a dash of inspiration and a desire to create change and that's where the magic starts happening and I think that if we step back from our businesses, we can see that in ourselves that we want and need those things. But how did you come to that understanding? I, I just think I, I realized that what was consistent throughout my life, whatever I've done, I've, you know, and if no one blows your trumpet other than you, then who's going to do it? But I've been pretty successful at most things. And I knew and I know that, of course, there's a highlight reel being played out on social media and here today and all of that stuff. So it's not always perfect. Of course, it's not. Mm -hmm. But I have got a successful marriage, which I think is just huge, you know, and today's, you know, my, my kids and we've got a great relationship. I've done well at my career at uni and and other things that I've done. And the consistent thing in that was me. And what was me in all of those different things? Well, I work at it and I don't take things for granted. And I am always open to learning. I'm I'm actually pretty good at taking feedback, maybe not always in the moment, but I will reflect on things and go, yep, yeah, there was definitely something I needed to learn. And, and we're course correcting the whole time through our life, like a plane. It never flies from A to B. It's constantly course correcting, going, oh, I've gone off a bit. What do I need to do to bring myself back? Oh, oh, oh. you know, and eventually that's where we get to where we're going. But um, that spark of inspiration is it's being open, I think, to opportunities. And it comes back again to trusting those instincts because yet you can work hard. I worked hard for many years in a corporate world where I wasn't loving it. I wasn't making a difference for my own life. I was making other people very well off based on my efforts. And when I realized, well, what if I would turn that to something that I had more of a passion about, that felt more purposeful and that could help others in a a way, you know, that wasn't just about me, um, that's when the magic started to happen. Oh, I love that. <laughs> well. and, and you've you've taken a, a bit of a detour. You've done Arbonne for years and years and been successful in that. And now you're doing Enneagram. What well, Arbonne that... is, is not an instead of. It's very definitely mm-hmm. an as well as. Because if you read my chapter, a lot of my Arbonne business was built around a very busy life with young kids, whatever. I'm an empty nester now. One's living and working in China. One's in final year at uni. So Enneagram came out of just my my ongoing desire to always be learning my my dream of um being the best person you can and that can sound like a cliche but cliches are often there because they mean something so I came across the Enneagram I think it was a podcast and then I started reading about it and you know sometimes what they, they call it reticular activation when you've when you're, you've got something in your mind you find it and you see it everywhere it's if you're buying a new white car you'll see white cars everywhere yeah. um so the Enneagram was everywhere I decided to read more about it find out more about it and eventually I went on a two-day retreat thought this is something that I could really do something with using it in my life using it with the people I, I I know and love in my business in my relationships and of course it was a progression from there going I think that there's something that other people could benefit from so Enneagram very very quickly this is the Enneagram oh, it's, right. it's Ennea means nine gram is diagram is diagram so it is just a nine pointed diagram each one of these points represents a different type of patterns of behavior in our personal personalities that show up again and again and what you can see is we're not putting anyone in boxes here everything's connected Mm -hmm. how do we connect how do we not connect what triggers us what do we respond to are we sitting in in a, a body center where we're driven by how we act by our hearts by how we feel or by our heads and how we think so it's a really holistic view as who we are and how we're connected with others um and when people ex- start to explore this what i found was i was starting to go ah oh, it makes sense as to why i do that and i feel like i'm in a great place when i'm in that zone mm-hmm. um and why that kind of behavior really triggers me or why i just don't get that person but when you can see 
actually we're all looking at the same thing from a slightly different perspective it really does play and i've used the word a few times haven't i that compassion mm. empathy for other people and and we can build stronger relationships with ourselves with others within teams um and i'm really excited to explore this as part of the new journey arbon's still there 100 percent massive part of my business but this is just a new a new game you know we've got to have fun with these things like you say it's the spark of inspiration mm. put some work ethic behind it magic happens off we go off we go <laughs> yeah I, I love knowing about things like Enneagram because I think that we can get stuck in that we know who we are and I think as we get older especially as we get to our 40s we we don't feel like we have to be that person that we've had to be in our 30s and yeah. Enneagram and uh, other things like it can give you the tools to be able to say oh that's how why I react that way mm. and then you bring your awareness to something like that can help you a lot in the way that you deal with business as well. Yeah, it goes back to our deep motivations. What's motivating us beneath this? What and it, and some people say this is innate from birth. Some people say it's childhood, but there is actually a pattern that that repeats, and it's really illuminating. I will. I'd love to do a free one hour taster session with you. And anyone that's watching this podcast, if they're curious about it, I've got a really special offer. And maybe we can talk about that um, for anyone that is a Daisy Chain fan. <laughs> If there was one lesson that you wanted other entrepreneurs to know, what would it be? You can't pour from an empty cup. Mm. Um, we are all of us on this journey, you know, filling and pouring and oh my goodness, you know, if you are if someone that's got that hard work ethic, if you're giving, if you're looking for inspiration opportunities, um, then, then often your own cup can get depleted. Mm. Um, and I think, but spent many years trying to be all things to everyone and not looking after myself. In fact, that's where the burnout came from. Mm -hmm. um, so understanding that it is absolutely not selfish for me to look after myself first, to take time out when I need it, um, to look after my health, mm -hmm. my wellness, and to switch off my flipping notifications. Um, <laughs> the, it, it's, it's filling your own cup mm -hmm. because then you have more to pour. So I, I don't think we can ever hear that enough. And doing this podcast as I've done now, that I think there's about 100 episodes out there. And there's been quite a few people that have talked about better well-being for ourselves. And so I took the advice that I'm hearing but not implementing. Yeah. And I'm recording eight podcasts today and I've booked in to go for a sauna. I And the guilt that I feel in doing that, but... I thought, no, I'm, I'm going to be exhausted at the end of today. I can't fill from the empty cup. I'm going to go and have quiet time. So I appreciate it. I think I might do the same later. And, and it's and it's actually, yeah, you have a better spring in your step. And also you can think that taking that hour out or sometimes the five or ten minutes, you know, mm -hmm. I start the Enneagram sessions, we just breathe deeply three times. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how many times people say, just stopping for like 15 seconds to close your eyes and breathe deeply we just don't do it enough and that is that's really powerful so yeah that would be my top tip um it's taken me a while to get there trust me but yeah what is your favorite business book Okay, so this is one you said you hadn't heard of, so I'm going to share it. It's called The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. The idea of The Slight Edge is that it's the little things we do that make a difference. And whether we're on the success curve or the failure curve is something that happens over time. So an example, if you were to have burger and chips, my mine would be a veggie burger, a veggie burger and chips for lunch today, you're not going to sort of put on weight and lose energy and and be on a, a bad diet track forever. But if you make that same continued choice over time, or you choose the bread or you have the, the sugar and that, it's over time going to have an impact on your health and well-being. Whereas if you just do that occasionally, but most of the time you're making healthier choices, goes up it's like doing the thing you said you were going to do when you said you were going to do it and over time the effect of that compounds but there are some beautiful stories in this book it's really easy read um and it starts with a story about um water lilies <laughs> water hyacinth and how they grow so wow the slight edge thank you so much for being involved in the book and for writing your chapter which i, I was absolutely enthralled by and for doing the podcast today thank you Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, please like the video and click the subscribe button for this channel for more inspiration. 
If you're a businesswoman looking for that community that will support you and lift you up, come and join the Shine On You Crazy Daisy membership, offering online networking, co-working, collaboration, and monthly masterclasses to grow your knowledge. Go to the daisychaingroup.com for more information. And for even more inspiration, please go to the link under the video and get your copy of the Shining You Crazy Daisy series of books with inspirational and motivating stories from businesswomen around the world.